It's for lucky time explosion. Welcome back to the trap. Bringing you an artist whose work will make you clap. Eternal possessions, that's name, don't forget. It's lucky time explosion. Get hit or get wrecked. Bringing you an artist whose work will make you clap. Eternal possessions, that's name, don't forget. It's lucky time explosion. Get hit or get Thank you for tuning in to the Lucky Time Explosion Golf Extravaganza. It looks like Brandon is up to putt. He only has a few chances left to take the lead. And it looks like it looks like he hits it. The ball is flying. It's flying through the sky. And it looks like it looks like a lucky time explosion! I hate golf! God, that was <laughs> enthralling. Go I think now. that was one of the best intros you guys ever did. <laughs> I mean, from my, from my, like, you know. Very nice. Short, it's very, I, I love that one. From my perspective, you've brought us a guest today. Oh, yeah. Bring us a we have uh, Eternal Possessions. Ooh. That's her nom de plume. Yeah. Ooh. On the streets. On the streets. <laughs> <laughs> but her government is Brittany DeMora. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, you know, it's a, Thank it, you, you know, yeah, I yeah, have yeah, another. Word, word, word. Because you know, you're Italian, right? You, yeah. Yes. You say spicy white. Yes. Extra <laughs> yeah, spicy. spicy. Yeah, spicy, spicy white. white. <laughs> yeah. Spicy white. Yeah, that okay. counts as spicy white. You know, they have regular white and then they have spicy white. What am I? What, like? What's the difference between white and spicy white? Um. Well, you know, the Italians, the Turkish, the um, Italian. You know, you know, white folks that they got some flavor to them. Uh. Mm. And also, they might hey. be a little swarthy. Hey, I know. Uh, Mayonnaise is a flavor. Okay. <laughs> it is, and yeah. there's also, I think, one of the the most popular colors that Bob Ross used. Yeah. Uh, Titanium. Ti titanium white. Those are the really strong <laughs> whites. Very strong whites. They're really resilient. I like, I like how you did that with the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I've known Brittany for a little while. Um, we actually met, we actually met, um, I don't know if you guys are, are we going straight into that? We're going just, straight yeah. into it. Okay, all right. Straight all right, in right. there. Um, well, Brittany and I actually <laughs> met because I've seen her work all over. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sure you guys have seen it as well. It'll be up on the green screen over here. Look at this. Yeah, right. yeah. Look, look. <laughs> and if you're listening, let us describe this art. Too. Word, word. She uh, does, describe she it does, to the view listeners. She does. Uh, she blind. does collage based work that very much, uh, very much feeds off of pop culture with a nice socio-political twist is viewed mm. through a socio-political lens mm. and then also a, 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 a philosophical lens to, to, to some extent as well. Um, I remember uh, I, I saw her work around. Uh, one, the, one of the places I saw her work was uh, on the Bowery Wall. She had a beautiful, beautiful piece of Queen Latifah. And uh, my, me and my ex at the time was walking by and I, and I just straight stopped in traffic yeah. I, I didn't give a fuck. People, people's horns were beeping. I didn't even fucking care. <laughs> and then the next time I saw her, I was walking down the street, I think two summers ago or last summer? It might have been two years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, so, how did um, you get up? I want to talk about the Bowery Wall for a second because yeah. that's a pretty uh, big spot. How did you get up in there? Uh, you just, gorilla. you just, yeah, gorilla you just got to go for it. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. That's ba bringing it back. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, well. it's oh, yeah. been curated and locked down again now to some yeah. extent, but there was one or two summers where it was super wild, and um, if you had the guts, you just went up and did it. Yeah, Ooh. that's like the summer of 73. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Nickelodeon guts. Yeah. Um, but I, I, was walking, I, was, uh, I was walking past where uh, Gem Spa used to be. Oh, Jim right, Spa, R.I.P. Jim, Jim Spa. Spa. For those who don't know, Jim Spa was a very iconic and tiny newspaper stand yeah. that had um, the chocolate egg cream, cream. the New York yeah, egg yeah, cream, yeah, yeah, yeah. which yeah, I still yeah. don't freaking understand why it's an I egg do cream. Not. There's I no not, egg I, in I, it, I, thank God. But she was doing her work there, and it was, it was uh, the way she was putting it up was very communal in the sense that she is an artist who doesn't have a permit to do such thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> and she was allowing people to like look and, uh, and like. Well, thank you for coming today on the yeah. show without a ski mask. Uh, uh, my pleasure. Well, I mean, I guess I if you, you do the guerrilla <laughs> marketing and you look really comfortable, it seems like you're meant to be there. Yeah. That's kind of so like the trick. Maybe that's the psychology. It is absolutely it. the psychology. You wear like a, a neon, like MTA vest. We should all get some. Oh, shit. I shouldn't be talking about this. We got plans. <laughs> I'm not going to share my ideas. Don't listen to me, anyways. Oh, I'll keep that to us. Patent, patent, patent pending, patent pending. And yeah. Anyway, so yeah, <laughs> how, did, how did that work out? Like, what was the experience like, like doing this guerrilla style? Like, 
collaging on the walls? It's definitely a mindset. Um, if you feel like you're not supposed to be there, then people are going to read that you're not supposed to be there. Yeah. So it's just not about not letting that kind of energy enter your, your mind state. And it's a gift. I'm not doing what I'm doing for any other reason other than to share right. a gift. So Right. So it's not it's a very nice reason it keeps you you got a, a reason for being there that's not malicious yeah and people pick up on that yeah. you know people and and cops pick up on that and it, um it reminds me a little bit of uh my days early on as a uh, like a hacker kid like a phone <laughs> freaker yeah, yeah. me and my friend ryan used to run I around uh yeah. doing this kind of like social engineering stuff where we would um we would like call, uh, uh, get on a pay phone and call into the sub, uh, into the rest, the restaurant, the supermarket, yeah. and then we'd be like, "Oh, I'm Jimmy in the back. Uh, the keys are all gummed up on here. I need you to put me in on the intercom and put me through the intercom." And they would just do it. They would put you through <laughs> on the intercom, oh my and then God. I'd be like. Beans are free today. Free beans. <laughs> <laughs> Grab all the beans you can take. Grab the beans and run. Did you guys Did you guys have pay phones in your high school? Yes. Oh, hell yeah. You did. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Did. yeah, I'm an 85 baby, yeah. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. So like back in the day, I was born in 79, and I used to have something called a BBS, which is a bulletin board system Oh yeah. for any mm. of those super-duper nerds that needed you know, direct connect back in the day. I had a 14.4. I thought it was cool. I think I saw that in the episode of Ghost Rider. <laughs> BBS is Ghost Rider? Yeah. Rally BBS. J. Rally Word. J. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I had to beg my parents for my own phone line. But, um, yeah, I used to have a BBS. And uh, back in those days, I mean, it was a very strange situation. I don't know. Did you ever go on a BBS? Of course. I used to mud all the time. Mudding is a multi-user dungeon uh, is what it is in the very first um, online multiplayer video games. We're called MUDs. Oh, okay. All the user data, okay. they're all text-based. Um, my, my mind went somewhere else when you said dungeon. Yeah, dungeon. <laughs> well, no, there's a lot of no different types stuff. of dungeons. Yeah. No especially in New York stuff. City. This is a family <laughs> show. It's, yeah, this is really ain't not, but... The box? <laughs> yeah. You Nobody the venue the, the box? Oh, uh, no. Oh, a lot of weird things go. There's Smurfs doing all sorts of strange things at the box. <laughs> I told you not to talk about Smurfs anymore. <laughs> Smurfs are banned. No, no Smurf discussion. <laughs> It's not because I don't like the Smurfs. It's it's his weirdness with the Smurfs. Oh well, anyways, moving problem. forward. I'm I love you guys' dynamic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Brittany, how did you like uh, your style? Is really cool. It's like a, it's kind of a like collage. It's collage, right? Like large scale collages. Are you collaging with the installation, or are you making the work first and then putting it up? I make the work first. Yeah. My OCD is far too strong to be doing that on site. That um, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that all gets done in the studio where I can obsess and fuss. And the street art element or the public art installation element is is more laid back and less perfection based. Right, and you're just kind of blowing it up from the studio and taking it out. Mm -hmm. mm. Where do you print, Kinkos? I invested in a printer. I yeah, invested I in a plotter printer because yeah. it's it's less about. Well, I mean, it's it's more financially. It's better financially yeah. for me, but to have control over what I'm printing. It's what the, is the model of your printer? Oh, that I cannot tell you <laughs> on air, my friend. I'm so Damn. sorry, but you know, there's no guidebook to this. And uh, <laughs> that's some information that you're going to have to uh, get on, on your, your own, own, kids. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. We'll just nice. take it to our printer. That's print a polite answers. way to say, go fuck yourself. <laughs> 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 We have, we have print esters. We'll, we'll go find your work and suck We have out a cool printer, printer here in Solus. <laughs> we can figure it out. We're pros over here. I mean, we're dumb cool dumb here. Dumb you know, yeah. Right across from us is that beautiful, gorgeous Epson 9000. Oh, it's so pretty. I love wow, it. Wow, yeah. We so do. your work, uh, as Akima said, has like a sort of socio-political bent to it. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Like what got you interested in making work like that? Um, how do you feel like your relationship to art involves the happenings of the world around you versus your internal monologue? Um, I think being a woman, it's hard not to be aware of your standing in society. Mm. Um, or being a person in general, a conscious person, it would be hard not to be aware, uh, especially in the times we're living in. Mm. Everything's a pressure cooker. Um, not everybody who makes art feels that kind of obligation, I suppose. But for yeah. me, um, yeah, Salvador Dali was all like, "Fuck a message." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and yeah. and you know, like that's fine. Everybody has their their purpose and their their different facets. Um, 
Was there like an initial like um, political movement or, or, or climate or a particular thing happening that kind of got you into it? Like, do you remember back like your first cause, so to speak? Yeah, probably Darius McCollum. Hmm. Tell so me more I, about that. I did a, a piece about Darius McCollum. He was a, a boy who grew up in Queens with undiagnosed autism hmm. and started stealing, bu stealing buses and trains. He was fixated uh, on trains and he knew every he knew everything to the point that after he was arrested, he was arrested 50 something times yeah. for doing <clears throat> this. And um, after 9-11, they took him out of prison to help them understand the systems wow. and the gaps in the system. So he was really like obsessed and has spent he's, uh, he's in jail right now. Yeah, um, they put him back. They pulled him out. They put him back. And uh, what is that called when it's it's like psychological jail? Uh, what? Uh, uh, an asylum or like a, a so they use it's, yeah. it's like for criminal insanity is it kind Bellevue? of institution. It's not Bellevue? No, it's somewhere up in Monroe. I think they just call them like mental health facilities now or something vague. Uh, my yeah. suspicion I'm pretty is sure pretty brutal. I, I know what the name is. It's Morgan Lappin's apartment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where all the crazies go. Yeah, and uh, I have more than enough stories to tell. Are we'll you going over to MLA? Are you, are you, but, um, are you locked up in MLA? <laughs> it's, it's almost <laughs> like you attract it for some reason. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm a man for that shit and I here I sit claiming that I swear to God I don't try for that to happen but right. oh boy I'm 45 and it's, it seems to be a consistent pattern <laughs> so you, also you were, Morgan you and Brittany have the same hair today we do wait <laughs> hair yeah, 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 purple tribe purple. Hair. purple right <laughs> so wait, I want that's more. real funny Akeem <laughs> that's real fucking funny I have no hair okay <laughs> oh you touched the nerve enough. now you touched <laughs> the nerve now yeah uh, well, what's tell, about Akeem oh shit. no you no, I love you. So I, I'm, cur I'm curious <laughs> to finish that story, though. I want to know what happened to the dude who was taking trains. Like he was gra like he was like take commandeering yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, I want to know. He more was common. He was not only commandeering them. He was driving them, um, operating them efficiently, dropping everybody off, like so, doing a better job than probably a lot of people. The that, MTA. Than <laughs> the MTA. Wait, wait, Why wait, didn't so they just hire? Of course, efficiency because, would be criminal. Because with of the his MTA. socioeconomic <laughs> standing. Yeah, so of he, course, he, of course, the MTA would find efficiency criminal. So yeah. he's taking over. Like, <laughs> Subway trains just to run Buses, them, though, yeah. to run yeah, them just properly. To, that's the crazy thing, and to awesome not even part. get paid. Let me for ask it. you a question but there's <laughs> someone like driving the, the bus and and you know operating the train. How did he get like how did he obtain control? He must have been watching and waiting. I, I don't know. He's like, not like he's like bonking out the driver. Like, no, he wasn't violent or anything yeah. like that. He just had this obsession that he wasn't 96. able to yeah. judo chop. <laughs> Makes me think of that train kid on YouTube. Do you know the guy who's like really into trains? He puts like a, a camera on his head. His name's Francis. Oh. Oh, he's amazing. He's just like I'm here on the platform <laughs> waiting for. <laughs> I know Francis. Two. I know Steve Francis. Francis. I know who the fuck you're talking yeah. about. He's adorable. I love that guy, dude. Same uh, vibes. Just that energy. He's all like, whoa, yeah. guys, whoa, like, did you guys whoa. see that guy? <laughs> and the camera put they put on such a camera on him. He looks like this insane looking fisheye lens. So his head's all huge and weird looking. He's, he's like, adorable. Whoa. I love really him. Cute. I love Francis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to but he had a different socioeconomic standing. I mean, he wasn't trying to commandeer them, but still, that's interesting. So, what happened there, and uh, what kind of what art did you make about that? And yeah, yeah, yeah. What, where did it go? It just got wild posted. Actually, it was I was um, there was a residency for is it collage in New Orleans? How do they pronounce right? K O L A J. Collage. collage. I, I didn't realize I had been mispronouncing. So sorry, I but so, so we had had a residency. Um, collage of street art and I had chosen that as my subject this was really early on like a year into me doing this kind of work and the message said free Darius which they also had prior as like a hashtag mm. so people were able to put that in and kind of read the story there was also a documentary I believe it was called off the rails mm. and I had just been up one night you know watching perfect stuff and come across it and I got kind of fixated on the story and um yeah that's a perfect name that's for a cool. documentary by the way yeah. Off the rails? Yeah. Off the rails. Out. That's amazing. Very yeah. good. It was, it was really fascinating. Stuff, but also really, really sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that, yeah, definitely. That's a, So he's still in jail today. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. unfortunate. For yeah, amazingly hobby. apt. That's yeah. how I should say. Not, not, it is, it is low hanging. It's lo it is low hanging fruit. You're right, Brandon. <laughs> I'm low hanging fruit. Ah. We're all low hanging fruit. <laughs> I want to get off this damn tree. Pick me already. Pick me. Pick me. Pick me. Pick me. <laughs> so, I'm uh, ripe. What have you been up to lately? Like, uh, have you found any new causes to champion? You know, I just started. Last year, you had your first solo show, right? I did. Your I had first, my, uh, my yeah. first solo last summer. Where was it at? 
It was at Amsterdam and 94th Street, I believe. It was Upper West Side. Okay. Which was kind of cool because that's a, such a different um, mm-hmm. set of people and community that I'm used to. So yeah, that, that was fun. Work. We actually we just had a guest on, um, uh, um, Adrian, who lives in the Upper East Side with me too. And we were talking about how the Upper West Side has a lot of like, you know, successful talent. Like people who are mm-hmm. chamber orchestras or Broadway actors or like, you know, there's a, there's a lot of creative folks there, but they're kind of operating on that other echelon of like 100%. institutional success kind yeah. of vibe up in there. Also, uh, yeah. also, you could get like a seven hundred dollar fine if you honk your horn up there. Yeah, good. <laughs> Don't <laughs> honk, honk. <laughs> No, I get waking up every morning at seven o'clock on the uh, on the dot by a line of parents dropping off their kids and school. Oh, and you're right. All you're down, right, yeah. all down Singing Avenue. Wait, 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 wait. I'm about to start throwing water balloons out of my exactly. window. That'll be awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Fuck those kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not safe for them to go to school anyway. But uh, <laughs> so that just happened then recently. You said. Your, your solo? Or yeah, that was too. last July. Last so July. Mm-hmm. It feels like a thousand years ago and yeah. two days ago all at the same time. So. I think, how often do you think artists should show? Because I kind of <sighs> think like having a solo show is like Ooh, a once a year thing. That's a great thing, question. That's a great opinion. question. Well, I'm now thinking about that. Like, okay, now what's going to be the next thing? I think one to two years. I think when you're on the roster of a big gallery, it's two years. Yeah. Um, I think to do, I did that whole show in one month. Which shout out Chashima for that opportunity, but that that was the time I was allotted. So I think to do anything on that scale and under six, I mean, you need time yeah, mentally yeah. and like, and in the physical world. So I would say two two years, you know, yeah. one two yeah. years. I want to put it into the ether right now. I would love for you to do like a little intimate solo here at Sola Studios. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, we have a nice little showing room. Ooh, we do some little yeah, private ooh, stuff. They do. It's a it's a good room for coming by and bringing collectors who don't want to go uh-huh. to a big party. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that would I mean. be my joy and my pleasure. Which is fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. it yeah. works very cool. It, Thank it, you. It, it reminds me a lot of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it reminds me of. It's just, it feels very contemporary. It, it feels you. very, uh, like a cool use of collage you don't see a lot. You Thank know? you. I like yeah, it. Yeah, really, like really, really, big. really. And, and um, collage, and I'm probably going to catch a lot of shit for this. Oh, nice. <laughs> Say something <laughs> real controversial. Get those views <laughs> up. Right. Oh, <laughs> collage can be, to some point, redundant oh. and repetitive. And yeah. because even though it's haphazardly and like and like you know you blah, 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 and it's impromptu and it has like a unpredictable rhythm, uh-huh. even in that unpredictability, it's predictable. So 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 to find a unique a set to find a niche like like Britney has found, yes, I I, I think it's amazing. Do you have right. any big influences? Yeah. Thank you. Um, do I have influences in, in visual, like visual art? Yeah, um, just like who who do you look at and go, hell yeah. That's I really good. love Cheyenne Randall's work. Mm. Um, his handle on Instagram is Indian Giver, and mm. he takes Not kind of familiar. Yeah, he's really amazing and works. His wife manages him, and they work together on projects. And I haven't met them, but they seem like a really lovely couple. Mm. Um, but his work is is reimagined classics. So mm. he'll take somebody like, you know, like a bref- breakfast at Tiffany's type image and overlay tattoos and like make it contemporary. So it has that kind of similar um, similarity with my work where it feels old, but also contemporary. There's kind of this mix of um, Ooh, yeah. things yeah. going on. This looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his work is really cool. Yeah, okay. Also shout out Sticky Peaches. Sticky Peaches is another iconic, you know, wheat paster, so. Nice. Yeah. I don't know sticky peaches, but one thing that freaked me out when I was a kid eating oranges, my fingers would get sticky and it would freak <laughs> me the fuck I out. That's I, one of the reasons why I didn't like eating oranges. I had like to give that. it up yeah. because I liked the taste, but I couldn't mentally deal with the hand stickiness. Exactly. <laughs> I had and to give it up. How do, you it feel about, how do you feel about other things that you eat and your hands get sticky now? Well, peaches <laughs> are good because peaches... <laughs> 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 I mean, then shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. Oh, well, so I shouldn't talk about the pickles <laughs> or the cucumbers or no the bananas. Pickles. Okay, I'll leave them out. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, indeed. You know, we can collage with all the rhymes. We should. Um, Brittany, can I yeah. ask you something? You know. Yes. Would you have any? Because I feel like we already touched on this already. Uh-huh. Would you have any kind of advice for wheat pastes, somebody who's looking to go out there? Would you have any kind of tips? You'd be like, like, you know, a certain time of day to go out. I don't know. Uh, you already said the attitude is everything. Yeah. I'd like yeah. To and, know. And trust I don't me, trust me, enough. as a black man in America, I know what it is to be like, 
Yeah, like pretend like you like act like you belong. Yeah. But um, <laughs> do you have any other tips? Like time of day, we're going like you know, like yeah, give us something. Um, I like to work in the morning. Okay. I don't feel like people are really paying attention to that kind of thing in the mm-hmm. early morning hours. They haven't had their coffee yet. Yeah, um, holidays are great. Because yeah. people are distracted, there's not, you know, you can pull up and there's not parking issues. You know, holidays I really like. Yeah. Have you had any issues with, like, um, people finding you after you put something up, uh, kind of guerrilla style, and been like, this is my wall? All the time. People are, yeah. oh which God. is like an undocumented form of mental illness. Like, it's not <laughs> your wall. Right. You know, call me back when you buy a building. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing I've noticed, too, in, like, street art and stuff. Even, even between people who have some sort of claim to the wall like they manage the business that the wall is attached to or they know the landlord they you know have an arrangement with the landlord even they end up fighting like i've seen yeah, like yeah, we yeah. this one artist who like got permission from one person didn't get permission from the next and then you've got um people who run around kind of like making it their business to manage like street art walls in the city uh, you've seen that yeah well oh, i wow, think I if their that. work was was popping they probably yeah. wouldn't have time to do all that right also it's very much akin to like graffiti and like bombing and stuff like that like you know you'd be like hey that's like you know don't go over my shit well that's another important distinction to make i don't consider myself a graffiti artist i don't claim any kind of stake in that world they have their own system they operate with and i respect that when weed pasters and street artists try to play tough about it's like just just right, because that's a that's an interesting thing I've been thinking a lot about actually is like the separation from street art and graffiti mm-hmm. and writing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. a writer. You're yeah, writing yeah, text, exactly, you're exactly, your exactly. Tag. But there was a blurry moment not that long ago. Totally. When like street artists and there wasn't a big distinction between the two. I didn't even think about how the two worlds would clash in terms of real estate. It's yeah. all about the real, it's, ter- oh, wow. it's about territory and shared space. Because yeah. again, this isn't really anybody's space. Uh-huh. It's right. how big are your balls or your breasts or whatever. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. you know, like it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's. Yeah, ovaries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I what have you? I've definitely dealt with artists who like went out for the first time and then came back to me like the day after and were like, uh, they ripped it off. They took it down. And I'm like, yeah, you didn't have permission to do it. Like, you know, people are going to do that. Like, it's all kind part of, of part the game. Of, part and parcel. What about people who are starting out and trying to, trying to, you know, gain their own real estate? Do you have any advice for them? Like, we're young, we pay stuff. Yeah, is there any, like, a code of ethics or conduct that you do adhere to? Do you pay yeah, attention I, to yeah, anything? Or do you just, like, find it and do it and then say, fuck it? I mean, everybody has their reasons in life, you know, and how they operate. I don't really operate any differently than I do in my normal life, which is I'm as considerate as I can be. And I'm very kind until you're unkind to me. Right. And um, but as far as people starting out, I think it's good to start where you're comfortable. Yeah. So areas you're already natural, naturally comfortable in that, you know, mm. um, that you just feel at home in. Yeah. And you don't have to be up on the Bowery Wall. You don't have to be in Freeman's Alley. You know, you can find your own little little spots. And um, especially when it comes to social media, like nobody's, that's not, they didn't, people don't, it looks, it's what it looks like on the phone, mm. you know, for a lot of it. Like you, yeah. you don't need to be like on those big walls. And if it looks good on your phone and that's like your end game is to post it, it it can go anywhere. You know, are you there's lots of space. In like, when you do studio work too, you, are you working on canvases, photo transfers, panel? What, what are you doing yeah, for the it, gallery? Or out, is the gallery the like streets. photos of your work on the street? Yeah, take it out the streets. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's um, something that's still evolving. I do intend to show all of my originals at some point in my life, um, but it's still kind of part of my secret sauce. And uh, yeah. Do you have a team that goes out with you when you do this? No, that I assists don't. you? It's just solo. Yeah. Nice. Solo bolo. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, once in a while, I shouldn't say that. I do have people that pop out with me once in a while. How, right. how do you get started? I, I have the pleasure art. of popping out with her. She's, nice. She is masterful. Like, she's just, she's just like, you know, whoop. Got it down, <laughs> Pat. Science. <laughs> 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 right, yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. It's very, it's no moves wasted. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, 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 at all. So it's how, how did you get started in art? Like, did you have the typical kind of like, did it all the time when you were a kid, got encouraged a little bit? Did you go to school for it? Did you study painting, drawing, anything like that? Has no. Has it been all collage all day? Nothing like that. I uh, have not had a super easy time in life um, in general. And so I found myself 
working a lot, you know, and doing things just to like keep all, all the lights on. And when the pandemic happened, I was able to actually be like, I'm going to take this crate of magazines that I've been lugging around to the last 20 apartments and like <laughs> Finally and do something with them. Yeah. And so it was always in me, but I don't think I ever had the mental So it kind of started in the pandemic. Yeah, then. really recently. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're, you're new. That's cool. Yeah, really because recently. that's when I started seeing your work pop up. Well, yeah. that's when it started popping uh, and, up. And, and yeah. I, I was in my head, I was all like, I was like, no, I would have see, I would have noticed this aesthetic already, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're usually in my stomping grounds. Mm -hmm. I I would have noticed this already, but yeah, we were just talking about that too <laughs> about the pandemic, and I know people are like sort of sick of pandemic talk, but I think this is a really interesting point because for me, I shut down creatively. Like, oh, that is I interesting. Could, yeah. I could not work at all. Like I I need society to like respond to, and my my first thought was just. I need to practice shooting a bow and arrow so I can kill a squirrel when the rest of society goes under. <laughs> so I did that for several months, almost a year, just shooting bows and arrows. And the katana. And the katana. Well, that was actually because of that stupid video game. I, I got really, I liked this video game. And when it was over, I was like, I don't want it to be over. I'm going to buy a katana. And uh -huh. chop shit up. <laughs> I'm that kind of weird guy. <laughs> I know what I am. What was it? <laughs> titanium? <laughs> titanium, yeah, I'm titanium white. I know this Don't is fuck off topic. with me. I got a katana. <laughs> Didn't you actually post something with your katana on Instagram and they blocked it? No, that was TikTok. They, oh. TikTok took my post down for dangerous acts. I think they were just like, being like, <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of people cutting off stuff with their katanas on here, but they know what they're doing. You, Brendan, you're, Brendan, you know you're, usually, you're usually the school marm of this podcast. Like, yeah. You tell me to stop talking about sex. You tell him <laughs> to stop talking about, oh, we got to bleep that one out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in control. Well, that's why I have the katana. Because if someone questions sword. my authority, I need to chop them. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's for. No, but that's that's cool that that allowed you to have some uh, creative freedom yeah, and actually yeah, like good. get that's get good. your juices going. Uh, what's your plans next? Like, what are you, where are you planning to go with this? Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like I'm never. I like I am like a dog with a bone at this point. Like, I'm not gonna. Stop doing it. The art world is mystifying and maddening mm. and there is a lot of different avenues you can take. So I think I'm just trying to figure out what actually suits me the yeah. best right now. What do you think the art world is? Uh, what is it? Where is it? I mean, what, what are we talking about? Commerce or actual be beauty mm. and meaning? Mm. And, you know, it's like, oh, man. I guess that's you kind know. of open, oh. too. You know? Yeah. Open Black hole. Because we do live in this, uh, you know, we live in a capitalist society where artwork gets treated like uh, the only, the biggest stick to measure its value is money, you know, and then that con that gets things con conflated and confused. And, you know, I think it separates people a lot from it. Which is another reason why I like doing this podcast and trying to keep it light and like being entertaining and instead of just like a yeah. dry, you know, welcome back to <laughs> art on the radio today. And then, and then you go like this. Like, yeah, and then you're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you're asleep for seconds. And like, I feel like, you know, the, com the common person, the everyday person has been separated from art. Yeah. As a practice, as a world, as a thing. The proletarian. Since separated, I was. Separated. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, actually, I think this happened because of some the proliferation of some of my favorite artists, like Franz Klein and you know Rothko and all those uh, abstract expressionists in the 50s. There was a CIA program mm -hmm. that funded uh, abstract expressionist painting and uh, promoted yeah, yeah, it around yeah, the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. What year was this? So that was like 56, wow. 70, 62. Yeah, like, yeah, it was yeah, actually yeah. founded in tandem with the CIA. So the CIA and this cultural push to uh, look about how free we are in, in New exactly, America yeah, yeah, yeah. came about the same time. And ever since then, we've had like kind of a separation from regular people mm -hmm. and art. And they've just decided that they feel like um, they're too stupid to understand what's happening. And they don't like no one likes feeling stupid. So yeah. they, instead, they just go ah, it's a bunch of shit. Well, bullshit. Um, I don't maybe know. it might be. Mm -hmm. Maybe this might be a good. Um, it might be a good segue. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, did you guys see? Did you guys see uh, the new Prince Char King Charles? Oh yeah, that red one, the portrait. Yeah, the King Charles portrait. Yeah, it's bathed. It's bathed in all of the blood of my ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very appropriate. Yeah. Well, you know, actually, that's one of my favorite things about the 14th century British aristocrats. <laughs> they would use blood magic and they would like bathe in blood and like crush up people's skulls if they had a headache. Wait, that, people still like, do that? I do yeah, that. That's true. You do do that. Okay. <laughs> I would love to blood bathe. Hey, no blood liable. Sang oh, no. Sanguine, <laughs> sanguine <explosion>. showers. <laughs> anyway. What, yeah, so you're just going to keep going and you're going to keep uh, making your practice happen? You're going to yeah. go bigger, you think, maybe? 
Yeah, um, I installed something yesterday that was about 12 feet, but Ooh. I really need equipment to go where I want to go next, which is 20, 15, 20, uh, but I, I really need, All I right. need a scaffold. And well, follow this account on Instagram. Check it out. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We got to run. See you next Bye. time. Work will make you clap. Eternal possessions. That's name. Don't forget. It's lucky time explosion. Get hit or get wrecked. Bringing you an artist whose work will make you clap. Eternal possessions. That's name. Don't forget. It's lucky time explosion. Get hit or get wrecked.